Hello and welcome to Supercat. We have got our second live demonstration for you today. I am Nikki and I will be your host through that throughout this show today. We will be featuring the light roll vehicle. But also we've got an added treat for you at 2 p.m. today. It's not too late to register for our electric ATMP and our optionally man variant at supercat.com forward slash news events forward slash events. Now you may be asking, why are we delivering this to you today? Well, unfortunately, due to coronavirus, all exhibitions have been cancelled globally, but that hasn't stopped our engineering team working tirelessly around the clock to deliver the latest modifications and techno technology innovations to our vehicles. So we thought this was a prime opportunity to deliver you our vehicles today. Now, there is a question and comments box. We would really like you to get involved today and ask, ask some questions for us, which my team will come up at the end of the show and answer those key questions. Also, if you'd like to get involved, please go to Twitter and use at Supercat Limited or use the hashtag Supercat Live. But please may I suggest that if you're watching this on demand or you have a commercially sensitive question, please email info uk at supercat.com. Now, that's all that's left for me to say is sit back and relax and please join Toby talking about the LRV. Nikki, thank you very much. Hello, my name is Toby Cox and I'm Deputy Head of Supercat running all the support services for vehicles that have entered service. Supercat has a history of building high mobility vehicles uh, which are renowned throughout the world and in this spirit LRV is the next iteration. The LRV, or to give it its full name, the light roll vehicle, was de developed to fill a gap in military light ground tactical support vehicles. Uh, when Supercat develops a new vehicle, uh, the basic principle is to use a basic platform um, that meets the majority of our users' requirements and then enabling the customer to tick the option boxes for those specific features that they deem essential. For example, these are a 24 volt electrical system for communications equipment, differential locks for mobility, etc. The same principle is also applied to the body structure, which we term as the user interface. This is developed to meet specific user requirements. The LRV has been developed using COTS running gear with enhancements where required to reflect the military specific requirements such as Stanag compliant recovery points through to the high ratio of off-road use and of course the military specific role. Key features of the base vehicle are a reinforced ladder chassis design which has been modified to include winch mounts front and rear, recovery and tie down points and underbody protection for mechanical components plus an interface plate for the rear module. We'll come on to that in more detail later. Four wheel independent suspension, double wishbone with airbags and height adjustable. Uprated brakes to compensate for the increase in gross vehicle mass, a three litre V6 diesel engine with eight speed automatic gearbox and a two speed transfer box providing permanent four wheel drive. This variant of the LRV has been configured as a three man patrol vehicle with a specific design criteria of being able to be internally transported within a CH-47 helicopter um, or carried as an underslung load. We'll take a look at some of these features shortly, but first let's look at the LRV 400 in action.
The LRV offers unrivaled performance, being a lightweight vehicle with physically small dimensions, allowing the internal CH47 loading. This means the LRV can be deployed globally with the ability to be, for it to be moved tactically on the battlefield, uh, so reducing mission duration and therefore time exposed to danger. The lightweight base vehicle also gives a class leading payload for longer duration battlefield missions. The independent suspension provides high wheel travel, low unsprung weight, which leads to high speed off-road and significantly reduced fatigue loading on the crew. This allows arrival on target with reduced fatigue, leading to higher chances of mission success. Some key facts. Designed as a military vehicle, utilising COTS components, rather than taking a COTS vehicle and modifying it for military use. Gross vehicle mass of 4.2 tonnes, a curb weight of 2.5 tonnes, giving a payload of 1.7 tonnes. Top speed is up to 160 kilometres per hour, and with a fuel capacity of 80 litres, it gives a range without refuelling of in excess of 800 kilometres. Ease of operation, uh, there are a number of driver aids. These include traction control, dynamic stability control, and hill descent control. All can be turned off when required. Looking into the vehicle, you can see that it's equipped with a full rollover protection system, providing a safety cell for the occup occupants with seating and four-point seat belts for three people. On the back of the vehicle, there's a weapon mounts installation or WIMIC frame to allow the vehicle to be used in its current format. Looking inside the vehicle, we have the main weapon ring, which is able to take a number of different weapons, such as twin GPMG, heavy machine gun, or grenade machine gun. On the opposite side of the vehicle, in front of the commander, there is a mount for the commander to utilize a GPMG. Both weapon locations have storage for ammunition so that weapons can be reloaded rapidly. Additionally, the rear frame has a number of storage facilities and the seat for the gunner. These storage facilities include spare wheels, jerry cans, ammunition as discussed previously, as well as a number of lashing points for securing loose cargo. Built into the sides of the rear body are also storage lockers for less used items and CES. Mounted on the front and rear corners of this vehicle are smoke grenade launchers. Um, additionally, you can see from here the Stanag compliant recovery eyes, a winch which can be mounted on both the front and the rear of the vehicle for self-recovery or recovery of other vehicles. Um, and you can see the snorkel. This allows unprepared wading to 750 millimetres. Some of the options Supercat can offer on the LRV include a remote weapon station mounted on the weapon ring, integrated communication system, a full blackout system to turn off all white light in conjunction with IR lights for use with night vision goggles, um, weather protection in the form of a windscreen, roof and doors, which can be either fixed or removable, locking differentials, beadlocked wheels and tyres to give a run fact capability, um, and ballistic armour and ballistic seats in order to provide protection to the crew. As well as this three-seater configuration, the LRV is available in a number of other configurations. Um, the obvious one is the four or five-seater configuration in the style of a double cab pickup. We can also provide a two-seater with extended cargo bed uh, and a fully closed soft top, removable or open as this variant. Uniquely in its class, the LRV can be converted from a 4x4 vehicle to a 6x6 vehicle in a similar style to the HMT. This is done by the addition of a third axle module. This is mounted by removing the rear module from the interface plate located about here um, and then fitting the axle in its place and then an extended load bed to suit. This offers the users the flexibility to reduce the overall size of their vehicle fleet 
but swiftly reconfigured the vehicle to suit different operational demands. The LRV 600 has many similar characteristics to the LRV 400, but with an increased payload capacity. Key advantages of this additional capacity are longer range and duration missions, greater cargo carrying capacity, configuration of the command and control, ambulance or recovery type vehicles. This conversion gives a gross vehicle mass of 5.5 tonnes, a curb weight of 3.15 tonnes and a payload increase up to 2.35 tonnes with negligible reduction in range. Although the power to weight ratio has been reduced due to the increased mass, the cross-country mobility remains excellent due to the added traction given by six-wheel drive. To summarise the LRV, it offers a family of 4x4 and 6x6 light roll vehicles utilising common components. By clever and appropriate use of COTS components where suitable, this provides the user with a fleet of vehicles that are configurable for a wide range of roles and combine class leading capability with low whole life vehicle costs. The LRV offers users an ideal lightweight rapid intervention vehicle suited for special forces, border patrol, reconnaissance and strike operations with a common fleet of support vehicles. At Supercat we pride ourselves on our continuous development and investment into class leading military vehicles. In line with the MOD Science and Technology Strategy 2020, uh, as set out by Defence Secretary Ben Wallace, there is an imminent need to strengthen our technologies to overcome emerging new threats. Supercat will continue to lead the way. Our next project will build on the research and development work and the technology developed in building the electric and autonomous EATMP and apply it to the future development of an electric LRV. The next generation LRV will have the additional capabilities of hybridisation as an option to suit our customers' preferred technology route. Now, back to Nikki in the studio who will be ready to answer your questions. Hello, hello and welcome back. Thank you so much, Toby, for going through the features of the LRV. Now it's the question section. And if you haven't written your question in yet, there's still time. Please go to the comments box on the video and I'll just hand you over to Toby. And he's just up, come and joined me. Hi, Toby. Hello, thank Nikki, you so how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Thank you so much for that great demonstration. We've had some great questions come in. The first question is, what is the engine in the light roll vehicle? Um, in its current guise, it's a three litre V6 engine, but we're just in the process of re-engining to a 3.2 litre uh, straight five engine. Uh, the reasons for this is the, the five cylinder engine is more suited to military use. While it has a little less power, it still offers an excellent power to weight ratio and um, the performance off-road is still fantastic. Oh, great. That's brilliant. Thank you. I've got another question here that basically says, I've read that the LRV is based on the Land Rover Discovery vehicle. Is this actually correct? Um, yes, it is correct to a degree. When Supercat was designing the vehicle, what we did is look at those components which were suitable for use in a military vehicle um, and designed out those components which weren't suitable. The primary reason for this is if you take a COTS vehicle, there is so much modification that needs to be done to make it compliant and to meet the specific requirements of our users, you end up completely changing the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Equally, if you design every single component from scratch, the vehicle gets extremely expensive and puts it out of reach for all but the, um, the, the, the highest tier uh, users. By adopting this approach of cherry picking the COTS components, but making those bits which need to be specific to the users we believe we've reached the optimum point of having a vehicle which is performs mm -hmm. and has the required reliability that our users expect but also offers a uh, good uh, through life cost because those um, components which need to be replaced through routine servicing and maintenance are actually um, able to be taken directly from that OEM, in this case, Land Rover's supply yeah. chain. So we're, we're leveraging the benefits of that high volume. Oh, great. 
hopefully that answers your question. Um, your competitors' vehicles have, been, have beam axles, which are simpler and more robust. Why do you choose independent suspension? Um, well, well, firstly, independent suspension is what Supercat's known for. You've already seen the HMT, and that was really the first um, application of independent mm -hmm. suspension on a larger vehicle. Um, naturally, we've carried that through. Um, the primary reason we choose independent suspension is the performance it offers over uh, a beam axle. Um, and without trying to get too technical, because that independent suspension is lighter, um, it is able to react to the ground more quickly. Uh, this then gives, uh, firstly, um, a more comfortable ride. Um, and you might ask, why does comfort matter? <laughs> um, well, I don't know about you, but if I drive, get in my car and drive to London on a motorway for three hours, I still get out and I'm feeling a bit tired. Mm -hmm. Imagine doing that for you know, eight hours you know, three days in a row if you're doing an insertion. If we can offer a vehicle that puts less uh, fatigue loads onto the operator and crew um, of a vehicle, it means when they get to their point, they're actually carrying out the dangerous part of their mission. Uh, they're not so fatigued, they're therefore likely to be able to have a higher chance of success uh, and carry it out and get it back safely. And that's obviously of paramount importance. Of um, the other aspect is it actually allows the vehicle to be faster. We know our users don't necessarily drive fast all the time. However, there are times they do need to drive fast uh, and this allows them to do that with a vehicle that will support them rather than throw them off the edge of the road. <laughs> Great, that's interesting. Thanks, Toby. Um, also, another question has come in. Uh, what traction aids does the light roll vehicle have? Um, so the standard, um, we, we've taken the, um, the electronic traction control system, um, hill, hill descent control system, which come as standard with the vehicle. Um, and they offer a, a very um, good capability for a less skilled driver. Yeah. So if the vehicle is being used by uh, an operator who's not undergone in-depth training in off-road driving techniques, it actually does virtually everything mm. for them. However, for the users who are more skilled, we offer um, uh, other f features such as um, uh, cross-axle diff locks, uh, lower ratio differentials with larger tyres, uh, and that enables the more highly trained drivers that we typically see within the Special Forces to really take the vehicle uh, right, to, right to its limits. Uh, and, and with those, it becomes pretty unstoppable in, in most, most terrains. Uh, wow, that's amazing. So uh, what developments are you planning for the vehicle? Um, well, lo like all our products, there's a, there's a continuous and ongoing um, sort of development program. Uh, one of the things we're looking at at the moment is the, the flexibility of the vehicle going, going forwards. Mm -hmm. uh, and for that reason, we, we have a space frame chassis under development. Uh, and the primary reason for that is it offers a, an ability not to be restrained or constrained by the wheelbase um, of the existing chassis. Uh, with a space frame chassis, if a customer, for whatever reason, wants the vehicle to be uh, 10 centimetres longer or 10 centimetres shorter or to have a bigger load bed, we can implement that in a space frame chassis very easily because we have full design control of it. Okay, yeah, that does make sense. Um, also, the LRV only has three seats. Is there other configurations at all available? Absolutely. Um, it was one of the key, key um, requirements when we initially designed the vehicle. Um, the, the, the version you have seen was put together and for, for, for a specific program, of which the customer only required three seats. Um, but you know, the, the standard vehicle, it's much like going into a showroom. You know, you, and you want to buy a normal pickup, you can either buy the pickup mm. with just a two-man cab, you can buy it with a double cab, you can have um, a, a pickup bed on the back, a flat body bed on the back. So we, we offer it really in, in a number of configurations. You have a just a two-seat cab, a two plus one, as you see it in the current configuration, um, or a two plus three cab. Then onto the back of that, we have the ability to put a different variety of different load beds. So we have the, the, the weapon mount installation kit, the Winnick frame, mm -hmm. as you saw on the video. Um, you can have a flat load bed or for utility purposes. Uh, we can do a troop carrying variant, which has an additional four seats on that load bed. Um, um, and, and then, of course, um, we've got the six by six variant, which can be brought in as well, which offers the same 
front end configuration of the vehicle, yeah. but um, more room on the back. Uh, and with that, we see um, the ability to either have a large bed for a logistics type vehicle or to be able to actually have pods which are mounted mm. on the back of the vehicle. Um, with those pods, you can then interchange them. So there, well, you have one vehicle which can be used in a multiple of roles. For example, command and control, yeah. troop carrier, ambulance, a, um, a, 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 recce me a recovery type body which has all the equipment needed to have uh, maintenance crews working on the vehicles plus carry some spares. So as a platform, it is extremely flexible. Yeah, very flexible. Um, or final question here for you, uh, Toby, is can the LRV be armoured? Uh, yes, it can be armoured. However, as a small um, vehicle, the, you know, the payload is obviously significantly lower than one of our larger vehicles like the yeah. HMT. Um, effectively, your armour is a part of your payload, so it becomes a trade-off. Um, you know, we, we have options for applique uh, ballistic and blast armour to give low-level protection, uh, but you are limited by the weight the vehicle can carry. Okay, no, that's great. Um, I have a question here on the electric LRV, which I think may be probably suited for uh, Steve, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. I will pass over to him now. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me, Toby. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Steve, can I invite you up to the floor? Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, yeah, I've got a question that's come in regarding the uh, possibility of the electric LRV. Um, somebody's actually said, I saw the LRV featured in the article for the US Army electric LRV program. Have you developed an electric version? That's a good question. Thank you, Nikki. Well, the um, development of the electric driveline for LRV is one underway based on the knowledge and experience we gained through the electrification of the EAMT, ATMP and hybrid electric HMT program. Yeah. So the, the chassis has already been developed with, with that in mind and, and driveline development is also underway, very much dependent on the kind of duty cycle and the requirements for electrification, whether it's around yeah. um, exportable power, whether it's stealthy um, operation. So there's a number of different variations that we can do. But yeah, it works well underway and we fully expect to have an electric ready LRV ready to go for that programme. Great. No, that's brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Steve. I really no appreciate it. Um, I've got, actually had some additional questions come in as well regarding the HMT. Um, so if I could say goodbye, Steve, and I'll invite Phil Applegarth up to the stage Thanks, if thank possible. You. Thank you. Hi, Phil. Hi, all right. If you could come a little bit closer. Yep, sorry. Thank you. No, that's all right. Um, right, so I've had a question come in about the cost of the HMT. Uh, right, very good question. Uh, quite hard to uh, answer, really. Um, all the vehicles you see in the global fleet, uh, they all look very much the same, but they are completely different. Um, so to give a price out would be pretty unfair because it all depends on the numbers, mm -hmm. um, the, the weapon systems, the armour systems, uh, any integration, industrial content globally. Um, and I'd be very happy to um, take any questions um, in, on, on the internet uh, on, in, a, in a mail um, if, if required um, to discuss numbers. Great. And if anybody has any questions on numbers, if you just want to email info hyphen uk at supercat.com and one of the supercat team will certainly pick that up um, another question also regarding the hmt is uh, which nations actually are, is it in service okay so just given the countries uh, in particular uh, the uk the us uh, denmark australia new zealand norway and, and estonia uh, currently uh, there are a number of uh, other propositions that we're, we're working on um, but obviously for commercial reasons i won't disclose them so no, no twisting your arm today then? No, no, no twisting my arm. <laughs> um, and also another quite good question here actually is, has Brexit affected uh, our ability to export the vehicles? So I don't think so. Um, the paperwork I'm advised is pretty much the same for the defence industry. Um, so uh, no additional red tape to, to cross uh, as far as we're aware. Um, I think uh, the... EU partners, our defence partners in the EU, are, are actually playing um, fair and, and using the protocols uh, and not disadvantaging UK companies, which is, which is nice to hear and hopefully uh, will carry on. Um, but I would also like to sh do a big shout out to the, the guys in the um, DSE, uh, all of the 
de uh, defence attaches, the trade advisers, uh, and all those desk offices in London. Um, your, your energy has been very well recognised by Supercat in, in helping us in, in uh, British exports. Oh, well, that's great. Thank you. Um, and then I think this is one final question. What enables a small company on an airfield in the heart of Devon to take on and beat global corporations? <laughs> a very good question. Um, yeah, great. Um, yeah, uh, nestled in the heart of Devon, obviously 360 days a year of sunshine, um, which is always great. Um, what allows us to take on those global players? I think um, we don't always beat them, it is the first point, uh, and we, we recognise that. Um, we, we um, uh, let's say, our main thing is to focus uh, and have a purpose on day one. So uh, the requirement comes in, or we go for a design, we make sure that it is fit. We, we work with the, the users, the requirements managers, the MOD staff, uh, and create what the vehicle, the best is what we can get it. Um, and that has to be balanced against what they've got in their budget and affordability uh, purposes. Um, we aren't a large scale producer, um, although we'd very much like to be in the future. Um, just a, a quick note there. Um, but, you know, we, we, we think that you have to go and work with the partners that you, or, or you, you have to understand your skill set. Mm. If you, if you wanted a tank, you'd probably go to Rheinmetall. If you wanted a, an ejector seat, for example, you'd go to uh, Martin Baker. And if you wanted a missile, you'd probably go to Lockheed. Um, and if you want a great um, mobility vehicle, then hopefully you'll come to Supercap. Um, so that's, that's where I think we are. Um, we also like to collaborate a lot. Uh, we're a small company, as you, as you mentioned. And I think that the collaboration um, with our industrial partners uh, is quite key to that as well. So, yeah, in the heart of Devon, we can compete uh, at the, on, the, on the world stage, uh, creating great vehicles. That's great. Thank you so much, Phil. Thank you um, all today for helping us and answering some great questions. That's Phil, Steve and Toby. Now, all that's left to say is just to kind of wrap up and just to say thank you to the production crew and the team who have been able to put this on under these COVID tight restrictions we've managed to be able to broadcast to you today. I hope you've enjoyed the show, but don't forget the electric ATMP and the Optiman variant will be broadcast live at 2pm today. It isn't too late to register, just go to supercat.com forward slash news events forward slash events. And again, if you have any other questions you'd like to ask, just email us at info-uk at supercat.com. You can also tweet us at Supercat Limited using the hashtag SupercatLive. Thank you so much for joining us today. Much appreciated. <laughs>